Do, 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 do. Welcome Highland Presbyterian Church to our Thursday morning conversations. I am Doodle Harris, Associate Pastor, and our guest today is State Senator Morgan McGarvey. Hi, Morgan. Hey, Doodle, how are you? I'm awesome. Thanks for joining us in such a big week in politics. <laughs> been a few things happening recently. <laughs> <laughs> there are. <laughs> Well, I'm going to start with announcements from our church. This Sunday, the 24th, is a hugely busy Sunday at Highland. Um, worship in Sunday school classes in the mornings. And then in the afternoon, we have the adult confirmation class at 2 o'clock, the family scavenger hunt at 3 o'clock, and the adult ed class about grief with M Megan McCarty will begin this Sunday at four. And Megan will be our guest uh, speaker on this show next week. And we will ask Megan about that class and other opportunities that she's been involved in at Highland. So if you have questions for Megan, I wanna put those in the comments. We'll be sure to ask her next week. One final announcement is that our 2021 congregational meeting is scheduled and will be online on Zoom uh, on Sunday, February the 7th at 12.30. Also I wanna let you know, we have some birthdays this week in the church. Um, these are the birthdays of Highland from January the 17th to the 23rd. They are Tom Johnson, Irla Grease, Lydia Thomas, Bob Dolak, Jack Ashworth, Evan Page, Brandy Miller, Zoe Peterworth, Molly Dobbins, David Tillett, Edward Tillett, Rachel Lacer, and Rebecca Mead. Happy birthday to you all. We're so glad you're a part of our family and hope you have a great way to celebrate this week. Um, so now, Morgan, I'm going to put you on the spot because I have so many questions and I want to just pick your brain. Um, Perfect. Ask, ask them all. By the way, the zeal and enthusiasm with which you make announcements is something that I could use for sure in every day of my life. That was impressive. <laughs> Well, thanks. I, I, I'll be honest with you, Morgan. I miss people so much. I just want to be together. <laughs> I know. I want to talk and hug and oh, I feel it all the time. Yep. I, I totally agree with you. Well, Morgan, in addition to all the other amazing things you are and you do, you are a member of Highland Presbyterian Church. We are. Yeah. Love. We love Highland Press. We love our, our Highland Press family. How long have you been a member of Highland? So I don't know um, because it's 2021, I think right now. And um, I don't, I don't know what happened last week, um, but I can tell, I can give you the origin story. Uh, okay. The dates are escaping me. You know, I grew up in the Presbyterian church and um, we were going to Presbyterian church here in Louisville, just a uh, little ways from our house. And I was working and my office was right next door to Clyde Fauché's and was also working in the same law firm as Margaret Seifert at that point. And they just kept saying, you know, you'd need to come and check out Highland Press. You just got to come and check it out. We think you guys really like it. And so we did. And I, I want to say it was probably 20 teen, I think is when we started, came and just immediately fell in love with the place. Uh, not long after that got Claire and Wilson, our, our oldest two kids involved in the high ho three day threes where they did three day threes, four day fours, and then did kindergarten at, at Highland Prez. Um, and just, I mean, love every part of the church. It's been, it's been wonderful. Well, that's great. Our church certainly loves your family too. I love seeing them. I remember <laughs> Clara and Wilson being so little and holding hands and thinking they were just the perfect siblings. Yeah, you know, we, we probably should have stopped with two. They're really sweet kids. And then we had a third one. Um, <laughs> the church mercifully is not I had to witness for the last year in person um, because she is wonderful and wild and spunky. Um, yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> we can't wait to get back in person either. <laughs> Good deal. <laughs> well, <laughs> Morgan, I know you're a state senator, but I don't really know any more than that. So can you tell me a little bit about what that means and what you're doing and how you're making a difference? Sure. Um, to serve in the state senate in Kentucky, it's technically a part-time job, although I, I'll tell you it's the most full-time part-time job uh, I've ever had. Uh, so I do have another job. I'm, I'm in my, my Louisville office now. Um, I practice law when, I, when I'm not doing the state senate, but you know, it's a big deal. I tell people this all the time. Um, you, can, you can criticize the state legislature in Frankfurt, and there's lots to say, but you can't call us a do-nothing legislature. 
we really are that branch of government that meets the people and we are passing laws every year. We're passing a budget every two years that impacts the lives of, of Bailey Kentuckians. So in that sense, it's really cool to be a part of because you know, we're not just going up there and debating bills and, and doing that for years on end. We are going up for a short period of time when we're in session and trying to, to pass laws that, that really will uh, make a difference. And certainly even if you don't like them, it will have an impact. Well, thanks. I, I, I'm totally grateful, um, especially for the way that Kentucky has responded to the coronavirus. Uh, that mm -hmm. so much hope is coming out of Frankfurt right now. Yeah, it, it, you know, I think we did some good things. Now, there, there have been some recent partisan battles that I think everybody's seen as, as we're back in session. But you know, I look back to last year when the pandemic hit and we were, we were at the tail end of the legislative session and you had Democrats and Republicans from across the state coming together and saying, okay, we need to pump the brakes on. We're not going to be in session. We know this is going to be bad. How can we give the governor some of the ability uh, that the governor doesn't currently have to, to make sure Kentuckians are safe? Let's hold off on the budget. We, we have no idea how much money we're going to have in the state coffers because of the pandemic. Um, let's hold off on that and, and not pass a two-year spending plan. Really did some responsible legislation. And I think the governor, of course, you know, he is a person of faith, and I think he takes his obligations very seriously. And, and so, uh, you know, we'll and has tried to do his best to protect people and to protect businesses and to make sure we, we come out of this okay on the other side. That's so great. Um, yesterday, um, we had an inauguration in our country. I assume maybe you watched it. Yeah, we did. And the kids watched, um, which, was, which was cool too, because it's, it's fun to see them as they understand things that are going on. What do you think? What, what, what was the message from that? What, what was the, so much going on? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot. Uh, I think this inauguration, the, I mean, it was obviously different, right, from the absence of people and the pandemic protections um, to really, I think we saw a very heavily fortified uh, capital and, and mall and, of course, all of the, the recent violence and, and the security concerns that were there. So, I mean, just watching it was physically very different. And then I think you, you take into account the emotions of the last four years and how we've all sort of been talking about and viewing and, and thinking about politics. And this was, whether you view it as an end to that era or the beginning of a new era, which, I, which is how I choose to look at it, I, I think it really set forward the tone of unity, uh, of this idea you know, that, that we're in this together and that's certainly better than the idea that you're on your own and how we chart this course forward together with, with healing uh, with understanding, with empathy, uh, with seeing people and meeting them and, and trying to confront so many of these problems that are affecting, you know, as, as now President Biden said, you know, not just blue states, not just red states, not urban or rural America, but, but really, you know, impacting all of us. And I thought it was important to give that message and, and to start us off on that foot. I uh, talked with some of our middle schoolers um, just after the riots a couple of weeks ago at, or whenever. Um, and they were saying that that President Trump is really the only president they've known enough to pay attention to. And so they, they had lots of questions about what's next and uh, what should a president, uh, what should their message be? What, what, how should they affect our lives? What, what would you say to those middle schoolers? Yeah, you know, that, that's a great question. I think it's even older than middle schoolers, right? Um, I have this year in Frankfurt, a 19 year old college intern um, and a really great kid, a really sharp guy. Uh, but I had to explain to him recently, this isn't normal. And you know, for someone who's that age, who's really just kind of you know, for the last decade been watching what's happened in our state and in our country, you, you do have to say this isn't normal. Uh, and that, yeah, you know, I was reminded this week of when Bill Clinton beat George H.W. Bush and the reception that the Clintons received from the Bushes after they just beat them in a campaign. It's the last time we had a sitting president lose an election just like this year. And the reception the Bushes gave them and in the note that George H.W. Bush left in the Resolute Desk for, uh, for Bill Clinton. And, you know, he ended it and I'm gonna just paraphrase, so I don't memorize it, but, you know, uh, he basically said, you know, the, the, the get to you, stay your course, don't let it get you down. And he also said, I'm rooting for you. Success is America's success. 
and you're our president now. And I think that when you look at this peaceful transition of power, going back to the inauguration, that we are, we've seen how fragile democracy can be in the hands of certain people with certain agendas. Uh, that's not what we are supposed to be. And that, you know, to explain to kids today, that as, especially as they're starting to form their own political beliefs and, and believe what they will, and, and who knows where the parties will be aligned, um, even when you know, they're our age, right? You know, when, when I'm sure they think they're really super old. Um, but, you know, this idea that, that the American president is a leader of the free world and the American president should be a president for all Americans, uh, particularly in a time of crisis like we've seen. You know, I hope that that's something that they latch onto as what should be normal. Thanks. Um, so uh, uh, a few days ago, we had the riots at the Capitol and then I think it was the next day or a couple days later, you posted on your social media that, that there were some protesters at our state Capitol. So I, what are you thinking and feeling with, with all of, of that going on? Yeah, you know, it, it's, it was a little scary. Uh, kind of a scary time to be in government. And uh, I'm, I serve as, as a, a leader of the, the Democratic side in the Senate. And so, you know, we were in some security briefings and, and going over security protocol and, and how to handle staff and, and talking about situations and drills that, you know, we, we're not used to talking about in Frankfurt. Uh, and of course, you know, for anybody who watched what happened in, in Washington, it, it was shocking, right? It was shocking to, to see people run into our Capitol and, and invade the Capitol and, and stop a joint session of Congress from certifying an election. Uh, it, it was sad, right? It was sad to see that. I'm not going to go so far as to say it was surprising, though. Uh, the rhetoric that we've seen from leaders has certainly led up to that. Um, if not outright incited it. And that's where we have to do better um, because we should always be surprised by that type of, of insurrection, that type of behavior. To be condemned, um, you know, not just after it happens, um, but to condemn that, that sentiment before it gets to that point. And so, you know, I think uh, my hope, I'm, I'm an optimist. Um, look, I'm, I'm a Democrat in Kentucky. You've gotta be an optimist. <laughs> Um, you know, so uh, I'm an optimist and I think that now that we've seen so much of this and we've watched what happened and we've watched even, you know, the, the disparate treatment and what the, the Black Lives Matter protesters received over the summer to what the people who invaded the Capitol and how they were treated, that with a mess of unity, with a new president, with a new beginning, it's not going to heal. It's not going to go away overnight. Um, but that we can start at least moving back in that direction. You talk about healing and, and healing is such a critical part of our faith. You know, we, mm -hmm. we spend time every Sunday acknowledging the brokenness that, that we feel, the brokenness that maybe we've caused. Um, we ask forgiveness um, and then we seek to be healed. So I, what connections or how should people of faith be responding? What can we do to, to be faithful and to be supportive of a government that um, really does, you know, value all people and, and uh, help others. Well, yeah, I think really when you, when you look at one of the radical notions of Christianity is that notion of love. Uh, and it's throughout the gospel, particularly put forward, I think in raw form in Luke, uh, certainly. And that idea that we do have to love everyone. Um, not just our neighbors, but our enemies. Um, and, and I think that idea of seeing each other, of, of having love, of being able to hear other people and their concerns and take those and listen to them and you know, internalize them. And look, just as Jesus instructed in the gospel, it's not easy to do that. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm reminded of my own kids who, especially before the pandemic, would sometimes accompany me different places and, and politics would come up. And one time something about certainly President Trump came up and I was answering the question. And, and I think it was Wilson, not Claire, I think it was Wilson who looked up and said, well, last night when he was on TV, you said, okay, Wilson, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> you know, that, thank you, thank you. Uh, the, those, were, those were at home conversations, um, you know, but, but I, I do 
think it, it, so it's hard for all of us, right? But we need to get back to that where we can really see each other, where we can try to bridge some of these divides, not just between Democrats and Republicans, but really between urban and rural and, and people of different faith and, and people of, of different races. And um, it's so important that we hold that notion of love dear and, and, and talk on so many of those levels of love and healing. And it's gonna, there's gonna be some bumpy roads um, there's going to be some tough times in that, uh, as predicted in the gospel, right? Um, but that I, I do think that hearing that message of unity, hearing those, even though he didn't come right out and say it in, in those types of direct Christian terms, um, I think we can all we can all ascribe to that and and certainly do our best to get there. Well, thank you. You've you've exhausted the questions that I have. But are there any questions? you wished I'd asked you or anything else you, you want to say to Highland Prez? You you have their attention, Morgan. Uh, maybe. I, if any of them are, are still watching, listen, you know, I think it's, I mean, this has been so hard. It's been so hard. And, and dude, we were just talking about like how much we miss people. I am a people person. I am a hugger. I miss it so much. I miss sitting in this. I mean, you know, we were out of the sanctuary for so long as it was being renovated. <laughs> and, then, and then, you know, and now... I, mean, I can't wait to get back uh, and just, you know, it's to remind people to be patient, um, that to, to have that grace with each other, um, with the people, you know, we, we love, with the people with whom we disagree, um, because we are going to, we are going to come out of this okay. And, and so it's just, it's tough and to have, you know, tell everybody to hang in there. Um, that <laughs> I mean, hopefully, hopefully there's some light at the end of the tunnel. Thanks. Thanks so much. I This conversation has been light for me and I look forward to more and being in person sometime. But yeah, yeah, me, me too, for sure. So we miss our Highland Prez family um, and, and we will see all of you guys soon. Well, thanks. Say hi to your whole family for me. <laughs> and uh, you guys have a great week. You all at Highland um, have a great week and we look forward to seeing you next Thursday morning. Have a have a good week. I'll see you later, Morgan. See you, Doodle. Bye bye.